Welcome back. The Senate has amended the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013 by prohibiting payment of ransom to kidnappers in the country. The amendments are contained in the Terrorism Prevention Act 2013 Amendment Bill 2022 passed by the Senate on Wednesday following the consideration and adoption of the report by the Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Martyrs. The committee's chairman, Senator Okpemi Bamidele, who laid the report before the House, said in his presentation that the bill seeks to outlaw the payment of ransom to abductors, kidnappers and terrorists for release of any person who had been wrongfully confined, imprisoned or kidnapped. The president of Senate, Ahmed Lawan, said the proposal would complement the federal government's efforts in the fight against insecurity when it is signed into law by President Muhammadu Buhari. Now joining us to discuss this is former assistant director of the DSS, Dennis Amakri, and we're also joined by chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State Chapter, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Good evening. All thank right. you for having us. We'll start with uh, uh, Reverend Hayab, who as journalist from Kaduna State. reason is that Kaduna State has been uh, the recipient or has suffered several um, terror attacks in recent times. Uh, and of course, these terror attacks have been accompanied with kidnappings and ransom has been paid. We can look at the, the schools and the school students who were kidnapped and parents had to pay the ransom and all that. Reverend Hayab, is this a welcome development as far as you're concerned? Well, one of the big challenges we've always had with uh, the way our uh, policy makers or legislators come about with laws is because is that they used to put this second thing first instead of the first thing first. To my mind, the most important thing that should have been done is to address the situation at the moment we are facing. We have, as I speak to you, 30 days ago, 62 or over 62 Nigerians were kidnapped by those who attacked the train, Kaduna train, 17 women are still with the, with the terrorists. Four kids are still with the terrorists. 42 men are still with the terrorists. Altogether, 62. One student of the Berkeley Baptist High School is still with bandits. And you can name numbers of people who are still with bandits. We've really not done enough to rescue these people and bring them home. And we are now coming up with a law that we want to send whoever pay ransom to bandit 15 years in jail, then the bandits die. You've not even arrested any to show us that there is enough effort to stop banditry, to stop terrorism. And you are bringing law. I don't think they understand these things at all because when your loved one is involved in this, then you will understand what is happening. I remember early this morning, a group of people came to me because a pastor, his daughter, and one of his members have been kidnapped. The kidnappers, after a long negotiation, accept to collect 900000 from the family. When they collected that money, they released the pastor, but kept his daughter and one of his members. And now they requested that these people should go and buy a particular type of motorcycle as ransom before they will release the other two. They went, they went, paid money, and someone went and bought the motorcycle on his way coming into Kaduna yesterday evening or afternoon. Security stopped him collected the motorcycle, and they came thinking that we should... I told them, what can we do? But you see, I understand their pains. I understand what they are going through. When I was speaking to them, they said, sir, you can see our father just came back. Our daughter, our sister is still with the bandit. The other person is still with the bandit. Now they may have reported to security. Nobody had made serious effort to rescue those people with the bandit. And now you are saying that if they give bandit money, you will... Yes, of course, we would have loved it to be like that. But have we done anything? enough to stop banditry, to stop kidnapping, to stop all this terrorism going on in our land before we put that law. Or we just want to put that law where we are doing nothing and so many souls are there suffering in the hands of this criminal. This is where I find this bill quite, 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 quite not placed in the right time or in the right position. Mm -hmm. Now, though the bill still will need to go to the House of Representatives, I would definitely speak out and ask the House of Representatives not to concur with this bill because it is not yet time. All right. Um, um, Mr. Macri, you, your, your thoughts on this? Um, uh, you've heard the Reverend who said it's not the right time to do this. As far as you're concerned for uh, the security situation in Nigeria, is this a welcome development? Uh, well, I agree with the Reverend uh, uh, that this law is actually putting the cart before the horse because 
you should do things according to, you know, uh, according to the sequence in which things happen. Now, I have been, my position all along for years has been against ransom payment. I don't believe in ransom payment because uh, when they collect the money, they use the money to go and buy more arms. And then, of course, it strengthens them to even start attacking our, attacking our own military and security forces. So this law itself is good. I think I appreciate, I appreciate what they are trying to do, but I think they are doing it at the wrong time, just like the Reverend said. Because uh, if you don't, first of all, you have to make sure that if you are telling the society not to pay ransom, it means only one thing. Don't pay ransom. If any of your people are taken hostage, the government will guarantee to bring them back. But the government has not guaranteed that if you don't pay ransom, your people will be brought back. So you find out that people have, in fact, we have cases in front of us. We still have cheaper girls. You know, and you are saying that, look, the families, and that was what we were talking about earlier, about the, uh, the Kaduna Abuja uh, real uh, explosion uh, thing, whereby the Ministry of Transportation and the railway should be setting up a desk to make sure that at least the families are taken care of. When we say taking care of them, informing them about what is going on so that they are not agitated unnecessarily. Then secondly, taking some of these people and they are breadwinners. And that's how international standards, that's the benchmark in making sure that these families are taken care of pending when the hostages will be released. All right, all right. You know, so if you don't do it, what happens? The MD of the agri bank has gone ahead and then paid his money and come out. Others don't have that kind of money. So government should think at the level of the ordinary man to make sure that when we put laws, those laws are going to be effective. Because if we leave it the way it is, I don't think uh, that law is going to be effective. Uh, at all. Uh, Dennis Marky, you, you started by saying that you are ordinarily against payment of ransom to criminals, to terrorists, to bandits, yes. to kidnappers, yes. whatever. Why? Hello? Yes. I didn't get you. Well, what is the reasoning right. be behind this, your, your or, or original stance uh, of being against uh, uh, payment of ransom to, to criminals? Why do I say that? Yes, why are you because against it? It's very apparent. It's very apparent. All right. How can you fool the person that is fighting you Right. You are fighting with an enemy. You have AK-47. He has AK-47. You, you keep on f shooting at each other. Then, when his, his bullets are running out, you know, he takes a hostage from you, then you take money and give him, and then he releases hostage from you for you, and then he uses the money you have given him to go and buy another bullet to be fighting you. It does not make any sense. So there is no need. Every responsible government will not do that. I know that there are situations where you negotiate with terrorists. It's not only by money. I know where Israel has negotiated with uh, Egypt to get the body of a dead soldier by releasing about uh, hundreds of uh, the Egyptians that we are arrested or we are, we are caught during the war. So there are many ways of negotiating. But terrorists will always want to deal with you in terms of money because they need the money. And if you push money to them, you know, it becomes a, a bazaar. Interesting. Where they could just do whatever they like. All right. Uh, uh, Reverend Hayab, you, you've listened to uh, uh, Dennis and Marky tell us basically that He's likened the payment of ransom to fueling your enemy. And uh, are you still, have you, have you been able to have a change of mind listening to him talk 
uh, no, 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 no. opposition. I actually didn't say that I, I'm in support of paying ransom. I, I quite agree that paying ransom is actually even suicidal. The fact is that the terrorists and bandits terrorizing us have become strong because of the money that they've gotten. When they kidnapped the Baptist high school students, they got over 250 million from the school and the parents. And when they also attacked the train, they got 100 million from just one victim. Now they believe that they will get more and more and more hundreds of millions. And that's why they are crazy. They are speaking to Nigeria as if they own this country, as if we don't even have a government. They flung the pictures of these people to provoke the families. And because they realize that we're so paying ransom, it's not right. But what we're just saying is that before you met a law, and say that whoever pay ransom should go for 15 years in jail. What measures have you put in place that will even make it difficult for the bandit to? And if they dare touch anybody, you will go after them to show the people that you are there. Why people are paying ransom is simply because they realize that if their loved one is there, they can report several times. I have had experience. I'm not speaking the stories people are saying. When we go to the, to the SSS, when we go to the police, when we go to the military, they will even tell us that keep negotiating with them and buy time. And if you continue to follow that advice, you will negotiate with them for the next 10 months, for the next 20 months, you are buying time because there's never a time that you keep negotiating and they tell you, oh, thank God that today we've arrested the man that you are negotiating with. So we keep negotiating and we have to pay before our loved one will come back and no arrest so that's why people are paying for ransom so we want to stop ransom but what do we do first before we stop paying but, of ransom? but, but gentlemen gentlemen uh, you you seem to be on the same page here uh, but but the senate itself has cannot go fight you know the the terrorists or the bandits the senate itself cannot go rescue um these these uh, uh, victims from the forests <laughs> they cannot they're not equipped to do that uh, you've you've seen in times past, Reverend, that uh, the members of the National Assembly, Senate, and House of Reps have invited service chiefs to come and answer questions. So the oversight is there. Um, I mean, it, probably this is the least they can do. This is the much they can do um, to prevent money flowing into the hands of the enemy on their part as legislative yeah. body. You see, the Senate are representative of the people, and when the Senate are making law, they make the law for the people. And the issue we are talking about is the pains the people are going through. Whatever may be the conversation between the Senate and the chief security officers, the Senate must understand that they are talking about the people. For, over, for years now, money has been given to these security men. What have they exactly done to stop this evil? You know, sometimes in this country, when you talked about security, those who are uh, by uh, privilege of office, or in particular office in security, we just think that you know nothing since you are not part of it. I believe security is about people, security is about everybody, security is not just an exclusive job of some individuals. So they need us, we need them. The role they play, we also have a role to play if we don't do that. I speak because, okay, just the same, this, mo this morning again, I hosted a large contingent of the police uh, co community uh, relations committee, and we had this kind of conversation, how do we work together to help our security agents? But when the National Assembly are making laws, and they fail to understand what is hitting on us, they fail to understand the pains we are going through, and there is no evidence out there to show that, look, if we come up with this law, then now all is well. That's why we are saying, before you make law, think about the people and also call for the input of the people. Right. I am not sure that the National Assembly or the Senate particularly have really called for the input of the people. But because, as I've said, this bill is not all over, the federal representative needs to also come up and discuss this. So that means we still have an, a, a, an opportunity to correct where it is wrong so that the final copy of this bill will not just be this 15 year sentence if you pay money, but also, if those in power fail to deliver our own who has been kidnapped, what do we do to them? Hmm. Uh, uh, Dennis Macri, um, sometimes you, you're from the intelligence uh, community, um, the defense sector, we won't call it that. Uh, so sometimes it may take, and I'm saying this as a layman who has no training in that, in that aspect, apart from what I read, what I hear, and what I watch. Um, sometimes it may take, would I be right to say sometimes it may take uh, a, a while for a rescue operation uh, to be successfully carried out. And is there an element of impatience on the part of the families of the victims or a bit of fear, you know, fear because the, the, the kidnappers, the bandits, terrorists, call it what you may, are calling 
the families on the phone to say, we are going to shoot your brother, your sister, your father, if you don't send the money now. And that panic makes them to even, before the, the authorities can get the acts together to plan a safe rescue, they go pay this money. Is, is that something very, that can play out? Yeah, very, very correct. Uh, your assumption is correct. And uh, I have been very much involved in cases like this, many of them. And that's why I was uh, saying that there is need when hostages are taken, that the responsible authority, in this case, we are talking of Nigerian Railway Corporation. Nigerian Railway Corporation should go ahead and set up, in conjunction with the state government, if possible, a desk where they will be briefing the hostage families, the family of the hostages, and the general public on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Because we need to know. Yeah. And that will lessen the anxiety of the families. That way, at least they are aware. They are aware. They are getting information. And then, of course, they will go ahead and take care of them in case they have problems. Now, there is another area that we have forgotten. And that is about hostage negotiation. It's is a total specialty on its own. And I, I'm very, very sure if we have uh, uh, the police people, they, they should be able to tell us if they have. In fact, I was surprised to hear from Reverend, Reverend uh, I have that uh, uh, the, the security agencies were telling them that you go ahead and negotiate. You don't allow the families to negotiate. You don't allow. That is not done. And you don't allow the hostage himself to negotiate, negotiate his release because emotions are involved. involved. That's why you will have a specialist, either in the SSS or in the police, who is a negotiator, who will be out there to negotiate with them. And they will negotiate to a level where they will agree on something. Like I said earlier, it doesn't have to be money because the negotiation has to be, you know, concerning other things. If it is money, usually, like other countries will do, they don't deal directly with money, with any hostage. Right. Gentlemen, they, they can decide to use a third party. Okay. Jen, Jen, we, we have to go. And these are some of the dynamics, you know, um, that may you are saying, you know, families should never negotiate with the terrorists. And um, I think you're all saying that, yes, indeed, you are against a payment of ransom, but some things need to be put in place. Indeed, um, uh, we have a, a list of all the amounts that have been paid, or most of them. It runs into uh, hundreds of millions of naira, if not billions of naira, including some that have been paid by government allegedly as reported by the Wall Street Journal. But we'll have some other time for this conversation. I want to thank you for your time. Dennis Macri, uh, former assistant director of the DSS, and of course, uh, Reverend um, Joseph Hayab uh, of the Christian Association of Nigeria in Kaluna State. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you too for having us. Thank you. And that's the size of a package. Some breaking news coming in uh, tonight. A federal lawmaker and governorship aspirant in River State, Farah Dagogo, has been arrested by the police. He was arrested at the PDP governorship screening venue in Port Hackett while he was there to be screened. He was earlier declared wanted by Governor Yesum Wike for allegedly disrupting the screening exercise, which he earlier denied. Of course, Farah has been uh, very, very vocal against um, what he says is the high-handedness of Governor Wike of River State. We'll look at this, I'm sure, subsequently on this program. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kofi Patels. See you tomorrow.